Okay, here's my side yard. This is all the dirt that I have. And I plan on putting rectangle planters along here. Four should fit here. But I have these alliums that I unfortunately have to dig up. They did not perform that well. So I almost don't feel bad <laughs> pulling them up, but we'll see. This uh this is wood pellets, unused uh, feline pine cat litter, and I have to clean up the garbage like that and get rid of all of these weeds. But I have a feeling that just plopping down the, I think, is that a tulip? No, it's just another allium. Yeah. But I had daisies here, and throughout the years I had all types of different plants. That big hole there is from one of the daisies. And yeah, these are my pansies, which are in serious need of water, poor things. And um, I have some wildflowers over here that come back. They're, uh... sorry for the background noise. But anyway, um, yeah, I have to weed that. I have walking onions over here. And, uh, see, I have cone flowers and things in here. Um, I have some other ones in there somewhere. And this pile of my lantana will actually go into these containers over here. I have set up this side here. These will be my tomatoes. And I have to figure out how I'm going to get this trellis up. But I would like it to be square, not this A pillar thing. This is where I've grown my tomatoes in years past. But now I have a healthy growth of oregano. It smells delicious and lots of weeds. So I definitely have to get to that as well. Um, there's a rosemary bush that I have to trim back. Um, there's some mint that was here from when my boyfriend planted it years ago. And um, I bought this cute little butterfly. They call it a butterfly house, but it's really only if they need a place to um, stay when when it's too um, too cold or if it's too rainy or too windy and they can't get to safety faster, that's what they have there. And over here, I have strawberries over here, potatoes over here, and if you see. The digging. It's probably the squirrels, the chipmunks, or the cats. I just hope that they haven't pooped in here. But that's why I have two beds for the strawberries. And look at there. That's the biggest strawberry growth I have so far. But this this side of the house gets much more sun than the other. But these strawberries are doing well. All of these were strawberries and they didn't really survive, but they're trying. Oh, here's another one over here, see? They're trying. That's my compost. That crazy mess over there. I want to eventually chop all of that in my wood cutter, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. <laughs> this is the side yard. I will uh, do a time-lapse video to show you putting all the dirt from over there into there.
I'm pretty sure these are the ones that I planted. See how big they are? And I think these are the ones that I planted. But these little ones, I don't know. We have so many bulbs here that are native weeds. So I'll just put them all in a container and see what happens. I'll put them here for right now. materials you're using for your garden because some of them can't take UV rays and they disintegrate. Right. Oh yeah. And then there was the time. The end of the season. I thought it would be a good idea to try to make some watermelons. Yeah, they died before anything came up. because <laughs> you'll need them always. Growing like mint. I don't know if you're focusing on that. <laughs> we'll find out. phosphate and 0.03 soluble potash. It says it's derived from palm-coated 
I'm going to say things wrong because I read them. I don't say them wrong. Polymer coated homogenous ammonium phosphate, potassium sulfate, and potassium nitrate, and polymer coated urea, mono ammonium phosphate, and sulfate of potash. And it says, this garden soil is regionally formulated from materials derived from one or more of the following reed, sedge, peat, recycled forest products, and or composted rice holes, or the sphagnum peat moss, horticultural perfect, ground dolomitic limestone, and a wetting agent. In Georgia, this product contains 75 to 85 percent composted pine bark because we have pines everywhere. Um, sphagnum peat moss, horticultural perlite, ground dolomitic limestone, and a wetting agent. So yeah, and this is a uh, stay green, which I believe is the brand name for Lewis. <laughs> for the amount I needed and the price I needed because I was filling up these grow bags. dry quartz, 24.7 pounds. Yeah. Couldn't tell you how much it was. I bought it a while ago. It came on a pallet. Some rebar over here. I wonder if they make small rebar or if I could use some. Yeah, I have a 
all of these things from this A pillar, whatever. Red cedar, maybe? I don't know. Okay. So, this is what it looks like. It's not rigid in any way, shape, or form. So, you're kind of like. Good luck keeping it there. Now, I'm supposed to be able to do two of these in the space because this is supposed to be eight feet. inches by 60 inches. Oh no, sorry. Sorry. This, this is centimeters. 120 centimeters by 60 by 30. They're supposed to be 31 gallon. Oh, I wish they had one. Like, I think it was like, that doesn't make any sense. check. I'm pretty sure that can't be centimeters. 120 centimeters would not be anything. <sighs> I'm sorry if it's slippery. I'm definitely rich to all this stuff. Your orders. This, so it says, <laughs> it says it's supposed to be 38 gallons on here. I don't think that's right. Because it says 31 over there. And yeah, it says, I guess I don't know my centimeters. 47.24 inches this way. 23.62 inches this way. And 7. 87 inches that way. So it's 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Yeah. I don't know. Well, they said light rain, so... We'll give you an umbrella. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> we'll see how this works. They're not perfectly rectangular and they need to be upheld with stakes, but instant beds, not bad from Amazon.
I'll put a link in the description. I'm not an affiliate, so it's just letting you know what I used. Happy Friday, everyone.